So we can do this same thing in cylindrical or spherical coordinate systems. We will start with the heat equation here for cylindrical coordinates. And we solve for the temperature distribution, and so on and so on. Or if we were working in spherical coordinates, we start with the heat equation in its reduced form, solve for the temperature distribution, apply our boundaries, and so on and so on. Now, in Appendix C of your book, there's a table. You can't see it on this board, unfortunately, because the, uh, the uh, scan didn't come out. I'm going to try to fix that in your notes. But basically, this table summarizes for the plane wall, the circular rod, the sphere, for those three situations when it's 1D steady state conduction with generation, with generation, it gives the temperature distribution, the heat flux, and the heat rate for each of these situations. So this is a useful table to reference for solving problems. Um, and if you've already looked at the video and then opened up your book and peeked at the table in Appendix C, then you can see this so I can talk about what's here. And you'll see that for a plane wall, the heat flux equals Q dot times X. So once again, if you think about this in terms of where the energy has to go, uh, Q dot watts per meter cubed times X, a distance, is going to give the heat flux leaving a wall um, uh, being equal to the amount of energy that was generated through that thickness of the wall. And then for a circular rod, you have the heat flux equals Q dot times the radius divided by 2. And you have a sphere where the heat flux equals Q dot times the radius over 3. You may wonder where this 2 and this 3 comes from in this case. Well, there's another way to look at this problem. You can look at the ratio of surface area to volume. Or you can look, think about this if you have a volumetric quantity, like heat generation, happening over a volume. Heat flux is a quantity that happens over a surface. So you might expect, because of that, that the relation between heat flux and volumetric heat generation would be similar to the ratio of volume to surface area. So I'm going to leave that with you as something to work on your own, but think about that and see if you can derive these expressions for the heat flux in the case of plane wall, cylindrical, or spherical, using the volume in the area in those systems to come up with it. So it's an exercise in just using an intuitive understanding and or really developing your intuitive understanding and applying simple geometry uh, to understand a very complex heat transfer concept. So I will see you in class on uh, next Tuesday.